So a few things about you know the traffic stops, right? Like I said, getting pulled over um, is a detention, right? Uh, you're not free to go, so those constitutional rights do kick in at that point. Um, you know, this isn't any different than any other detention, even though it's you know somewhat more common. I mean, a lot of folks have more experience with this. Uh, the difference, the main difference, is you have to show your ID or registration or insurance if you're driving. Um, but technically, you know, all you need to do is sort of crack the window just enough to give them your information, and um, and you don't have to answer anything. So all this business about, you know, where you've been, where you're going, have you been drinking, have you how many drinks have you had? So legally, you're not required to answer any of that. Okay. Now again, it's one of these practical areas um, where you're gonna have to make a decision about, you know, whether you want to escalate the situation, how much you want to cooperate, and at what point are you gonna stop. You know, one thing I just want to make a note of, I mean, you know, you, I'll just say, you know, from my personal experience, I don't ever pull over, okay, I've been pulled over like this a few times, um, like in a weird place or like a dark place. I don't like to do it um, in a place that's not well lit, that's not populated, okay. I don't think that's safe. If it escalates, um, I don't want to be in that situation. So what I do, and I've done it a couple of times now, I throw on my emergency lights and I slow down and I just keep going until, you know, they follow me to like a well-lit area, a shopping plaza, something like that, where there's people and there's cars. They don't like it. They're kind of annoyed, you know? They're like, well, what's the matter? Like, why didn't you pull over? What were you doing? And I said, officer, you know, I, I just, I didn't feel safe there. It was, you know, a dark place. I wanted to be in a public place. That was it. Okay. Um, you know, so that's something that they might not be happy with you, but you can do that. Um, so this is important, right? You can refuse searches do not under arrest. Again, all he says, I did not consent to this search. Can we search your car? No, I don't consent to the search. Okay. Um, that, again, might not stop them, but you are on record as having refused, and that's going to help your lawyer later on. Sobriety tests. You can refuse sobriety tests. Refuse them. Okay. Um, any defense attorney will tell you to never, ever, ever take any kind of um, breathalyzer, um, blood test, sobriety test and any of that stuff, okay? You don't blow, you don't, you know, do that thing on the side of the road where you're like standing on your head or whatever the means. <coughs> okay. Um, this is because by the time that you are um, being asked to take one of these sobriety tests, they've already decided that they're gonna arrest you. Okay. Um, so all you're doing by taking these sobriety tests is um, providing officers with more evidence that's gonna be used um, potentially to hurt you. So it's not going to stop you from being arrested, um, but you know it will help you get get you convicted. Okay, in, mo in most cases. Um, so you want to really take that in con into consideration when you decide, um, you know, if you want to take a sobriety test. So here's what's going to happen if you refuse um, a sobriety test. Okay, um, they're going to arrest you. Okay, um, they're going to book you, take you to jail. Most likely, um, you'll spend the night in jail, and then you'll get a court date. And they'll let you go in the morning. Um, your license is going to be suspended, um, you know, not revoked, suspended um, for a certain amount of time. You have to go to ALR hearing and, you know, a good lawyer, really any lawyer should be able to get you an occupational license where you, know, you can drive to get to work during certain times of the day and things like that. I promised folks I'd say something about um, no refusal weekends, so-called no refusal weekends. Right now is one of these weekends um, here in Austin, right, from Memorial Day. There is a lot of misinformation um, out there about this. People think that because of that name, No Refusal Weekend, that somehow there's like some kind of different law or your rights are suspended somehow and it means that during this weekend you have to blow, okay? And, you know, this is intentional, okay? Let's be like real about this. I mean, it's, you know, they, they, the authorities want it this way. They want that confusion to be out there. What it is is this, okay? If you refuse the, blood, uh, the breath test, uh, then they can go get a warrant and take your blood. Um, try to take your blood, right, with a signed warrant from a judge. Okay, that's not any different than what they can do anytime. Okay, Supreme Court has ruled um, that it is constitutional um, to, you know, draw, to do a blood test um, for alcohol or substances um, with a warrant signed by a judge. Okay, they could always do this. Now, the difference on a no refusal weekend is that there's an internal policy where there's more police out in the streets and um, there's a process in place where they have judges on call ostensibly 
to um, sort of make the whole warrant process faster. Because getting a warrant takes a long time, it's a pain in the butt, um, you know, they have to find a judge if it's late, like at night, you know, it's going to be hard, they have to get a judge to sign it, they have to get somebody out there for you to look at it, it takes a long time, so usually they don't really do that, um, you know, on something casual. Um, you know, and the threat, supposedly, during the refusal weekend is that, well, now we're going to do it. So it gets people thinking that, well, what's the point of, you know, I'm just going to blow if they're going to take my blood anyway. People think that, right? Like, let's just blow it and get it over. Okay, they might or they might not. Okay, because they still have to do all those things. They still have to go out, um, you know, they still have to get the judge, they still have to get the warrant, they still have to bring it out. Da -da 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 -da. That might take a really long time. They might just decide, okay, this is like such a pain. Let's just book this person, you know, we can keep him in jail overnight and release him in the morning with a court date. Done. Okay, that might happen. Um, if they do end up doing the whole deal and the warrant and the blood draw, um, it's still going to take some time for them to do that, even with the expedited process. So you're waiting, you know, and a defense attorney will say, well, look, I mean, the longer, the more time that you can buy, your blood alcohol is going down. So arrest, um, you know, generally, the police uh, will legally arrest you, you know, in one of these situations. They witness you breaking the law, right? They see you doing something. Um, they have probable cause to believe you've committed a crime or they have an arrest warrant um, for your arrest or, you know, other kind of, they could also have a bench warrant, like you missed a court date somewhere or something like that. Um, so, uh, to arrest you, they need something called probable cause that most folks have probably heard of, right? It just means that it's more likely than not that you committed a crime. It's, it's more proof than um, is needed to detain you. Um, we talked about to detain you, they need this um, reasonable suspicion, right, which is supposed to be more than a mere hunch. So to arrest you, um, they need probable cause. It's a higher standard. Um, you know, it would be something like, um, you know, well, I smelled weed on this person, right? Um, do they just lie and make crap up? Yeah, all the time. Okay, it's another one of those things that technically it's one thing in practice, all sorts of stuff happens. So, you know, these are vague standards because okay, reasonable suspicion and probable cause, and a court ultimately has to decide whether the officer you know, met the standard or not. Um, so that's why it's important to write down everything after the incident. Um, ideally, you know, it's being recorded, so there's evidence, um, and that's going to help you um, and help your lawyer um, later in court. So you want to fight it out, you know, in court, not in the streets. Um, so, they place you under arrest, okay, you're going to jail, you got to kind of just need to relax and come to terms with that, um, and, uh, you know, if you remember one thing from like all of today, right, remember the magic words, I'm going to remain silent, I want an attorney. You'd be surprised, I mean, how many people, when they're in this situation, of either being detained or arrested, like they just start running their mouth. Um, you know, if you've said the magic words, right, you've said, I, I, I'm going to remain silent, okay, I want an attorney, um, you know, the, you're under arrest, right, so let's say you're going to the jail, whatever, you're in the cop car, um, so there's some silence, and then something happens, and you start, you find yourself talking again, okay, I'm, something happened, and you all of a sudden, you're, you're answering questions again, okay. Um, legally, then, they can start questioning you again, okay, because what happens is, when you invoke those magic words, there's kind of like a protective bubble that, you know, that you're in, okay? They're not supposed to penetrate that by questioning you. When you say something, you break that, it goes away, okay? So all you do, it's not a big deal, I mean, all you do is, you know, if you see that that's happening, you just say it again, you just re-invoke the magic words, you say it again, and it just comes back, okay? Um, so, you know, don't let them trick you into thinking that just because you started talking or you answered one question or two questions, that now all of a sudden you, can, you just have to answer everything, okay? So if you find yourself in that situation, you, you panicked, whatever, you started talking, it's okay. Just, you know, take a breath, say, okay, I, I'm going to remain silent, I want a lawyer. Um, so searching, um, when you're arrested, the police can search you, okay? The standard is to the skin. Technically, that's supposed to be different than a strip search. Um, you know, have they done stuff like giving uh, body cavity searches to people on the side of the road? Yeah. yeah. Are they supposed to? No. Okay. Um, so, you know, they do all sorts of stuff that, that, um, that they're not legally allowed to do. So, um, it's also important to know that um, police can lie and trick you. They're allowed to do that. Okay. 
Um, they're allowed to lie and engage in illegal activities, especially as part of undercover work. Um, of undercover work. So they might promise you any number of things, okay, and when you've been arrested or just, you know, if you're being questioned, uh, if you're just being detained. You know, your situation is going to be a lot easier if you cooperate. Uh, if you just tell us this, then this will happen, we'll just let you go. They don't have to do any of that. They can tell you whatever. There's nothing that says, oh, because he told me this, now he has to do it, okay? They don't have to do that. So don't believe anything. There's, there's nothing that's making them follow through on whatever it is that they promised. And this is true all the time, so not just when you're under arrest. Um, you know, like I said at the beginning, right, there could be officers here right now, um, and they don't have to identify themselves. Um, even if you ask directly, you know, are you a cop? Yeah. Um, say no. Um, and I'm like, really? You sure? You sure you're not a cop? I don't know. Okay. They don't, they don't, they're not obligated to, to identify themselves. There's some misconception about that. They you get in someone's face and you say, are you, that they have to tell you, but they don't have to tell you. You know, people sometimes get this wrong-headed idea. They've heard of something called entrapment. Anyone here know what that is? Or have heard of that? that is a movie called Entrapment. It's very familiar. What's that? Yeah, I'm probably moving. It's very familiar. They're very familiar with the entrapment issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's a legal defense, right? Where um, if an officer induced you essentially to committing a crime, you know, you're supposedly there's this defense. Well, don't think that um, you know. Most likely, this isn't going to help you. Okay, that. Um, you know, it, there is no entrapment when a person is already re ready and willing to commit a crime and all the officer is doing is sort of providing the opportunity um, for the person to commit the crime. So I just want to clear, clear that up because people sometimes think, oh well, you know, no, I heard of this thing entrapped, they can't do that, they can't make me, you know, they can't facilitate a crime, they can, they do. Always answer any kind of questioning during detention or arrest with the magic words, it doesn't matter what they say. Um, cops aren't your friends, there's no reason to believe them. Okay, I'm remaining silent. I want a lawyer. Okay. Um, just a few things in civil disobedience, recording police. Um, you know, people, you know, a lot of folks here in this room I know are familiar um, with civil disobedience. People sometimes voluntarily risk arrest, right, um, as part of a protest or a demonstration, like linking arms, occupying, or sitting down in like a busy intersection and something like that. Um, just uh, get legal support and training before undertaking, uh, under undertaking nonviolent civil disobedience. Um, everyone that's participating, everyone that's risking arrest, should be aware of the risks that they are um, taking on. Okay, so some groups are really great at you know taking care of their folks and providing that, and other people are less so. So if you're part of a group that is considering um, doing something like this, uh, just make sure that everyone involved understands. Um, you know, their risks and ideally you'll want to have volunteer attorneys on call if anyone's arrested. You know, sometimes there's hundreds or thousands of people arrested um, at a time um, and that, you know, you definitely want to have legal support for that kind of action. So um, briefly, you do have the right to, photo, uh, to photograph and videotape public officials carrying out their duties in public spaces. Okay, public official, public place, you can record that constitutionally. Now, um, you know, there's this provision that you can't legally interfere with um, law enforcement. Um, and this gets a little bit murky. So you have to be a reasonable distance away from whatever the officers are doing. Well, I mean, what's reasonable? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's like, I don't know, 12 feet, 15 feet. Uh, you know, they're going to say, no, it's like five times that. You need to get across the street, like, get away. And they'll get, you know, start yelling at you, get away. Right? Like, cross the street or whatever. Um, so, you know, the cops are going to want you as far as possible, um, so it's common that they confront you, that they get in your face. So, um, you know, there's practical elements of videotaping the police there that you want to think about before you're in that situation so you know how you want to respond. Um, there's some, uh, it's, it's a little bit unsettled the, uh, as to the constitutionality of them looking at your recordings, like scrutinizing what you've recorded. Um, they are certainly legally not allowed to delete it, but they do um, regularly and Comrade Josh is going to give us uh, some tips later on about how to avoid that and steps that you can take to protect your um, material. Um, okay, let's just do the recap really quick here, okay, what to do in the conversation, right? This is just anybody, they're, they're the average person in the street. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Uh, if you're free to go. I don't wish to speak to you. I gotta go. You go. You get out of there. Okay. Detention. This is when the, the constitutional rights kick in, right? You now have 
If you're not free to leave, you now have a right to be silent. If you remain silent, right to an attorney. So you would ask, why am I being detained? If they start searching, I don't consent to a search. Um, and always remember the magic words, I'm going to remain silent and I want a lawyer. There's a great uh, resource here in Austin called the Civil, uh, Texas Civil Rights Project. Um, they do intake, you have the number there uh, by phone, you can call on Thursday afternoon during that time. Um, you know, it is a non-profit organization so they don't uh, get to take on a lot of um, individual cases for free, but they do have a list of local really good attorneys in the area um, that will be able to help you uh, most likely at a reasonable cost. Okay, I didn't say much about um, you know undocumented folks um, and some particularities about that, um, but you know if you were interested in that information, that's also a great resource. The National Immigration Project um, of the National Lawyers Guild and they will help you find immigration attorneys all throughout the country.